Ted Cruz, ah, Ted Cruz. Apparently, he hasn't given up on his dream of becoming the president of the United States. So despite the fact that he embarrassed himself incessantly while running for president in 2016, he might be considering it again in the future. Let's watch. What are your thoughts on the field of potential candidates going into 2024? And would you ever consider another run for president? A absolutely. Uh, in, in a heartbeat, you know, I ran in 2016. Uh, it was the most fun I've ever had in my life. Uh, we had a very crowded field. We had 17 candidates in the race, very strong field. And, and I ended up placing second. And, you know, there's a reason historically that the runner up is almost always the next nominee. Mm -hmm. and, and that's been true going back to Nixon or Reagan or, or McCain or Romney. That, that has played out repeatedly. Uh, you come in with just an just enormous base of support. You know, in 2016, we raised over $92 million. Mm. Well, things don't usually work out that way for candidates or potential candidates who are uh, disliked by members of their own party, which I'll get to in just a second. But I do wanna just address uh, one brief statement he had in that lengthy answer, where he said running in 2016 was the most fun he's ever had in his life. Which is one of the most depressing things I have ever heard out of the mouth of Ted Cruz. And to be fair, he has said tons of depressing things that have, you know, humiliated himself. And I say that because here is a JR rated video. It's a compilation of the most humiliating moments for Ted Cruz during the 2016 election. Are you taking off? Yeah, they're going with me. Hey, let's hop out of place. We're taking it. Good job. Good job. You know, the amazing thing is that basketball ring here in Indiana. And it's the same height as it is in New York City. It's not easy to tick me off. I don't get angry often. But you mess with my wife, you mess with my kids, that'll do it every time. Donald, you're a sniveling coward and leave Heidi the hell alone. So will you support him as the nominee? I'm gonna beat him. People know exactly what New York values are. <laughs> the values in New York City are socially liberal or pro-abortion or pro-gay marriage, focus around money and the media. When the World Trade Center came down, I saw something that no place on earth could have handled more beautifully more humanely than New York. You had two 100. That was a very insulting statement that Ted made. Five major agencies that I would eliminate. The IRS, the Department of Commerce, the Department of Energy, uh, the Department of Commerce, and HUD. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. Stand and speak and vote your conscience. Vote for candidates up and down the ticket who you trust. I appreciate the enthusiasm of the New York delegation. And God bless the United States of America. You hear the booze uh, for Ted Cruz over there. That pledge was not a blanket commitment that if you go and slander and attack Heidi, that I'm going to nonetheless come like a servile puppy dog and say thank you very much for maligning my wife and maligning my father. Hi, this is Ted Cruz calling. Uh, I was calling to encourage you to come out and vote on election day. I just wanted to encourage you to come out and vote. Thank you and God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so delicious. I'm full. I don't think I ever have to eat again. I'll tell you, all you have to do is have Ted Cruz say anything and play that clip. <laughs> okay, Ted, please run again. Okay, we're asking you, okay? Don't make us beg. Okay, please run again. It's gonna be so much fun. And if Trump is running, then definitely run again. Because that's gonna be hilarious, okay? Now, what do you think? I'm going to be a servile puppy dog? Please vote for Trump. <laughs> I mean, right when you're talking about betas, I mean, I'm serious. I've never seen a bigger beta. No, that's not true. Lindsey Graham. Okay. <laughs> but outside of Lindsey Graham, that's the biggest beta I have ever seen in my life. The one upside of the Trump presidency was the like revelation that most Republican male lawmakers 
are incredibly weak and incredibly pathetic. I mean, it was so easy for Trump to unman them. And I, that was the only thing I enjoyed, you know, to be completely honest with you guys. But I also wanted to make like most religious people and cherry pick something from 538 because I don't really like 538 and I don't really follow their work because oftentimes Nate Silver is wrong about things. But I did like this quote from 538. Harry Enten, <laughs> of all people, wrote this. To win the Republican or Democratic nomination, you need the backing of at least some of the party apparatus. At a minimum, you're your fellow party members shouldn't hate you. And the crew's hatred doesn't stop at the edges of the Senate cloakroom. Influential party actors dislike him too. And if you're wondering <laughs> why did he debase himself at the end? Because he said, "Oh man, if you come after Heidi, blah, 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 you guys saw. By the way, idiot Ted Cruz, don't ever say 2016 was fun again. You're inviting everyone to say he called your wife ugly and he said your dad was a murderer. And then you licked his boots. Which part of that was fun, Ted? I mean, so is, is, was that fun? Does that picture look fun to you? It's so obvious that it just as a political matter, you should never refer to 2016 ever, let alone as fun if you're Ted Cruz. I just want to be careful because humiliation is a kink for some people. That's a good and point. I don't and I'm want not to kink judging. shame. We're not kink shaming. So okay, yeah, we're not judging Ted. Hey, listen, you like being under a boot, that's your call. Okay, but now to the point about how even party members don't like him, that's not as relevant. But what is relevant is party donors. And so if you're wondering why he turned into that puppy dog after he talked so tough, it's because that speech that we should, that JR had in that compilation was at the convention where he said, go vote your conscience. And he did not endorse Donald Trump, even at the, as late as the convention back in 2016. What happened next is what changed his mind. So he goes upstairs to the Mercers. They were his largest donor. Remember how he mentioned the $92 million in donations? The Mercers alone gave him 13 out of the 92, okay? And he goes up to their suite because, of course, they've got like King Palace at the convention, and they slammed a door in his face. Mm. And he was like, What happened? They're like, No, you lost, and you're our dog. Now, Trump won, we're supporting him because he's gonna give us tax cuts. Now, you kneel, dog. And that's when Ted Cruz showed his true colors and he became this dog for Donald Trump because the donors told him to. And then at the end, he has a temerity to brag about the $92 million he had in bribes. He said, "Oh, you know, I had a strong base of support. I thought he was gonna mention the voters. And he's like, no, I got $92 million in bribes. <laughs> and I would do anything for those guys <laughs> and I proved it. I licked Donald Trump's boots with my tongue after he insulted my wife. I mean, I work for the donors better than anyone. Yeah. Congrats, Ted. That doesn't really give you strength. You look incredibly weak there. This is, by the way, I, I do want to go to the tweet that uh, Trump had put out there, which of course was meant to insult his wife and compare Ted Cruz's wife to Melania Trump. It's just no need to spill the beans. The images are worth a thousand words. And I just, I can't imagine being married to a man who refuses to defend me, like really defend me after. Like he went, he went phone banking for Trump after that. It's just, it's amazing. Anyway, we do want to ask you a question. Um, and we might have primed you a little bit for this poll, but we do want you to be independent thinkers and answer this question. Go to tyt.com slash polls. Does Ted Cruz have a shot at winning the 2024 election? Yes or no? Yeah. Um, well, look, guys, honestly, there is one caveat there, which is who's running, right? They're all going to be, if it's not Trump, then it's a free for all and and anybody could win. But I just say this last thing, he oozes weakness and has no idea because he's sitting there, even when he was talking about how he came in second, he's like, you know, look, I do historically when Romney came in second and I'm second and then, you know, then the next person, no, no, the right way to do it is go, am I gonna run? Well. Of course I'm gonna run, I almost won last time. Why wouldn't I run this time, right? And that's because I kick ass and people really like my policies. And that's why I have a strong base of support among the goddamn voters. That's how you do it. Not like, oh, keep me thinking and hysterically, I don't give me he doesn't, I please. He doesn't have it in him, Cenk, you know it. You know it, he just doesn't. Like even if you, if that was the message you wanted to send, he doesn't have the capability of making a strong statement like that. That's true, but you know, I really wonder what, would have happened if Trump never ran at all, 
right? Mm -hmm. Because one of those other 17 had to win and they're all weak and yeah. right? So I don't know if we, Ted Cruz would have won uh, the nomination, right? Remember when Jeb uh, Jeb Bush was the, the favorite? Uh huh. Jeb Bush. Yeah, no, but he was never the favorite. The polling never indicated he was a favorite. It's just that corporate media loved Jeb Bush because of because he's corrupt and they would have taken money from their sponsors and done exactly what their sponsors ordered Jeb Bush to do. So they're like, Jeb Bush, Jeb Bush, he's, he's, he's a front runner. Which poll? Show me a poll. He's front runner, right? And the only other guy who's got a shot is Marco Rubio. He also will give everything to the donors. Marco Rubio, I'm like, show me the goddamn poll. I said, like in October for sure, that was three months before any of the voting in the primary, that Trump was definitely gonna win the Republican primary. Now, why did I say that? Because he was leading in every poll. And everybody in corporate media was like, "Oh no, there's no way he's gonna win. There's no way, mm -hmm. it's gonna be Jeb or Marco. We know because we love those guys. That's why when I tell you Washington's in a bubble, that's what I'm talking about. They really don't get it. They just love corruption so much they can't see straight. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.